In today's video, I'll be building a simple base. I have some large scale dioramas that I'd like to build, so I thought I'd practice my techniques before moving on to those, and I also need to improve my modelling area so I can film them. Hi, my name is Dave, and I am Military Diorama. Welcome to my channel. I haven't built an urban diorama for a while, and I haven't built one on this channel, so I thought I'd just practice my skills on a smaller base before I start on the bigger ones. I used a cheap pitch frame for the base. This is a great cost effective way for doing vignettes or dioramas and they come in various sizes so you can pick the one you want and yeah, just easy to use. I unpack the picture frame and remove the internals from it by loosening the clips and then discard the glass and the cardboard and just keep the wooden backing. Then I fix the wooden backing into the picture frame using a hot glue gun. Then I measure the internal insert to make a piece of foam board to fill that and then cut another piece out and attach that to the top to make the actual base of the diorama. And again I fix this down with a hot glue gun. I've got a rough idea of what I want to do so I'll just mark out the base using angles as opposed to 90 degrees because it looks better when it's offset from the edges otherwise it just looks a bit strange being at 90 degrees so I try and use smaller angles or angles that aren't 90 so it looks a bit more interesting. The plan for this base is because I want to try and practice a load of new techniques that I haven't done before like using tarmac paste and things like that is I want to do as many different things as I can fit in without it looking strange. So I'm going to have a, a concrete slabbed pathway with a raised brick wall with a tarmac car park area separated by a wall, well not a wall but a fence, and then a lower the same level as the footpath concrete area, again separated from the path with a fence, a wooden fence. I start measuring out the foam to do the raised area of the tarmac. Once it's cut out, again I fix it to the base using a hot glue gun and then just trim it down, getting the edges nice and straight. And then for the concrete area where the bins will be, I'm going to use cork board. It's just three mil cork tile that you can get in a DIY shop. It's got quite a good texture to it, it's good for bricks as well. I just cut down this using small cuts, not trying to cut through the entire thing at the same time, just using the smaller cuts to cut through it in about three or four motions. Gives it a nice clean cut. And then I mark out the edges and then I'll cut that and fix it down again with a hot glue gun. There's going to be a little strip of dirt between the concrete and the slabs so I'm going to put a little wooden edging in which is typically what they use to mark out concrete for the pour so I'm just going to put that in with a coffee stirrer and round off the edge like it's been worn down a little bit and then I'll fix that in with a hot glue gun. Next I move on to the, the brick edging for the, the walls and I'm using a thinner, firmer blue foam board for this. I'm going to use the cork sheet to get the width of the bricks and then it's about 3mm and then just do between 7 to 8 for the length and I'll do this on the entire strip and cut it to size and fit it to the edge and do the same on the inside of the wall. Just scoring it down halfway through with a craft knife and then I'll go back over with a toothpick to widen the gaps. I cut out a length with a little bit of an overlap 
so that I can make the two walls together and then tidy up the edge. I use a piece of the white foam board to separate the two bricks on the on the upper level so there's some thickness to the wall and then I do the same with the blue bricks and face off the back of it and then I use the, the blue foam board, cut some rectangles out and use that for the slabs. I'm pretty much using the hot glue gun here for most things, I can't use super glue because that will eat the foam away and also if I use PVA it will take too long to dry so I'm using the hot glue gun because it's just quicker. With the slabs I'll glue those down with some Mod Podge because it doesn't really matter about those going off because I can work on other stuff whereas I need to get the actual base of the scenery down so I can carry on working on it. Here are some stills of the progress so far. For the concrete texture I'm using AK Interactive Texture Cast which is a water based paste so I know that it won't eat the, the foam board and I'll do this on the slabs and also on the concrete area that's been cast and after I put it down I just clean the gaps out again with a toothpick and once it's dry I'll give it a little sand down so it's not too textured but it's quite a good product for cast textual metal but also for concrete. Next I use a Vallejo paste which is for tarmac and it's 26214. I've never used it before but it looks quite nice in the jar and after I'd applied it with a brush it, it looked quite good. It does look like asphalt or tarmac. Just apply it with a brush and then I spread it out with a piece of balsa wood trying not to get on the edges. You can clean it off 
with water as it's an acrylic paste. While I'm waiting for the, the pastes and the textures to dry, I apply some capping stones on the wall made out of the blue foam again. I just stick these down with some hot glue. And it's just a good idea to, if you plan out what you're doing so you can work through it and as you're doing other things, things are dry and it just makes the build a bit quicker. Here are some stills of the progress so far. Next I use some Vallejo Russian Mud which is 73808 and I just use this to fill in the gap between the paving slabs and the concrete slab. It's just a muddy earth texture and I'll be putting some undergrowth and also a fence along here. Once it's all dry, I'll give it a sand off and then prime it with a dark grey primer. And then I, I fill in the details, just do some base painting with a mix of white and just adding a little bit of black in to make some differences in a grey colour to give it some variation. This is just a base coat so I can see what it looks like and I'll go from there with what I actually do with it. I try and do the slabs in different colours so they're all just different shades of the same grey to give it a bit of variation. I just do this by adding a little bit of black or a little bit of white to the, the grey that I'm using just to give it some variance. I also do the same with the capping stones and then the brick wall is painted with some dark red that I lighten with a little bit of yellow to give it a bricky colour and again like I say these are just base coats to give me some idea of if I need to do any sanding down or what the textures are like or just if it looks good enough to carry on. Well, that's all I've got time for this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. Next week, I'll be working on the fencing and a bit of foliage. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or comment. And I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching.